the sinner paid all his due. Sprinkle your soul with the blood of the Lamb, and I will pass, will pass. Chiefest of sinners, Jesus will save all he has promised that he will do. Wash in the fountain, open for sin, and I will pass, will pass over you. compassion, oh boundless love, oh love and kindness, faithful and true, find peace and shelter under the blood, and I will pass, will pass over you, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood. I will pass over you. Only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. This is my story. To God be the glory. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. One day they nailed the carpenter to a rugged tree, thinking he would never build again. There they held him through his hands and feet. Still he came. A master plan. Jesus built a bridge to heaven so that I could have a way up to him. Jesus built a bridge, the only of wood with one rugged cross Jesus built a bridge the father looked from heaven to the world below and saw there was no way to claim his own. So to the world his son, the master builder, had to go to make a way to bring God's children home. Jesus built a bridge to heaven so that I could have a way up to him. Jesus built a bridge, the only Pieces of wood with one rugged cross, Jesus built a bridge with only three nails and two pieces of wood with one rugged 
cross, Jesus built a bridge. Of times the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to of his dear face all sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ sometimes the sky looks dark with not a ray of light we're tossed and driven on no human help inside be o'er all storms forever past we'll cross the great divide to glory safe at last we'll share the joys of heaven a harp a home a crown the tempter will be banished we'll lay our burden down face all sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ and one of the songs in this album we're going to do for you today says how we feel this is basically our philosophy of ministry I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what you're going to go through tomorrow. But I do know that you'll never be out of his care. Okay. This is from the heart. eyes of God are upon me. He sees everything I do. And the arms of God they're around me. They keep be safe and secure and he knows where I am every hour of every day he knows each thought I think he knows each word that I might 
might say And although there have been times I've been out of His will I've never been out of His care Uncertain things can affect me like sickness, disease, and political strife. But my heavenly Father surrounds me yes, it does. with joy, with peace, and with life. And he knows where I am Every hour of every day He knows each thought I think He knows each word that I might say And although there have been times I've been out of his will I've never been out of his care. And although there have been times I've been out of his will, I've never God bless you guys. Get into the Word of God this morning. If you would, please turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 7, please. Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter number 7. We're going to read a familiar passage of, of Scripture, but I hope that it's a blessing to you this morning. Uh, Matthew chapter number 7, beginning in verse number 21, we'll read down through verse number 23. The Bible tells us, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? One of the saddest verses in the Bible, verse number 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this, this morning. God, we thank you so much for your presence. We thank you for each person that's here. And Lord, we just ask that you would meet with us this morning, uh, right now. God, that you would take complete control of me, my thoughts, my words, my actions. Lord, I ask that you would fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. God, give me the words to say and clarity of thought to say them. Lord, I ask that you would help each person here to be able to be attentive to the message this morning and to examine their lives. Lord, help us to know, I know without a shadow of a doubt, that you want us to know 100% about our salvation about our relationship with you. Lord, I ask if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be their day of salvation. Lord, help us as Christians to uh, examine our life as well, to get those things out of our life that ought not to be there and replace them with your will, replace them with the things that you would have us to do. God, I ask that your perfect will be done this morning. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. As I was studying for the message this morning, I, I came across this, uh, this article, and it says this, a Christian author and speaker by the name of J. Allen Peterson, who wrote The Myth of Greener Grass and several other books, traveled the world extensively, teaching seminars on marriage and family, and he tells a, a story about boarding a 747 
on one evening uh, uh, from Brazil on one evening to uh, return uh, here to the United States. He was just settling down uh, to rest when the captain came up on the loudspeaker and said, announced that we have a serious emergency. Three of our four engines have shut down because of fuel contamination. And the fourth engine was struggling. They were trying everything they could to turn the plane back around and land at the airport. The flight attendant sprang into action and told everyone to do exactly what they said. Alan, flew, Alan said that he had flown millions of miles, but that this was the first time something like this had ever happened. They were instructed to close the shades on the windows and to assume the crash position, bent over, holding their legs. He said that no one could tell how close they were to the ground. And the flight attendants yelled, Prepare for impact! Alan said everyone was praying, most of them in Portuguese. He found himself praying as well. He prayed, God, thank you for allowing me to know you and to serve you. But, oh God, my wife, my son, please take care of them. Well, since Alan was writing about this scary event, we know that they landed the plane safely. But as he reflected on this near-death experience, he realized he wasn't even thinking about the broken copy machine at the office. He wasn't thinking about when the next time is that he has to change his oil in his car. He was thinking about the most important thing, and that is relationships. Relationships. Why is relationships so important? Because, because once we boil life all down, relationships are the most important things in life. Today I want to speak with you in our text. Uh, we're going to talk about the relationship that never was. The relationship that never was. As I was uh, preparing and reading in my, my personal Bible time this week, I, I was reading in John chapter number 2 and verse number 23 and verse number, through verse number 25 where the Bible says this. It says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did. They believed when? When they saw the miracles. But then the next verse goes on and it says, But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. And he needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. And I tell you, there are people all over the world today who think they have a relationship with God because they know some things about Him. They know, they, they've heard about Him. They know some things about him, or maybe because, because they believe that he can help them in situations in their life. I hear people all the time that, that cry out to God whenever difficult times come in their life, but the rest of the time in their life, they just live like the world. They think they know they have a relationship with God because he can help them in difficulties. Or maybe even they've even read the Bible a little bit and, 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 they, and they know what they've read and, and they understand and they even believe some of what they've read in the Bible as well. But they've never had a personal relationship with God. There are people all over the world who think that they've, uh, they have relationships with people simply because they met them. Or because they've talked with them on the phone, maybe. They've got a relationship with them. Or because their friend uh, knows them, and, and you're their friend, and so you must have a relationship with, with your friend. Can I tell you, those aren't friends. Those aren't relationships, but those are acquaintances. This morning, we're talking about a relationship with God. A relationship 
with God. And can I tell you this morning that my desire uh, in this message this morning is not to get you to doubt your salvation. That is the last thing that I want. But I want you to know 100% that you truly do have a relationship with God. I know that there are places, there are churches, even Baptist churches all over the world, that there are people in the pews that have been members of the church and, and members of the church for most of their life, but yet they don't have a personal relationship with God. Listen, my desire is for you to know, and can I tell you, that's God's desire as well. That you know that you have a personal relationship with God. So number one this morning, talking about the relationship that never was. Number one is in order to have a personal relationship to God. Listen, we need to understand that the relationship is not about the words. It's not about the words that that we say. Look there in verse number 21 of our text. The Bible says... Uh, At the very beginning, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I tell you, there are people in this world that just know how to say the right things. Right? I I can tell you, I'm not one of those people. I have a a brother-in-law that uh, he is saved, and I praise the Lord for that, but... But to me, he just seems to know, he just has the right words. And, and, and I contact him, and every once in a while I, I ask him certain things because, you know what, I just can't think of the right words to say, and, and he can always think of the right way to say it. And so, so I, I thank the Lord for my brother-in-law, and, and I thank the Lord that, that, that he's saved, and he knows Jesus Christ is a personal Lord and Savior. But, but listen, there are certain people that, they just say the right things. They have, they know how to say the right things. Can I tell you that, that words are not a substitute for obedience? Words are not a substitute for obedience. There are people, again, that have the right words. They have all the right vocabulary. They have all the right Christian vocabulary. They know whenever somebody says, are you saved? They can, they can repeat, they can they have the right vocabulary. Oh yes, I, I, I go to church. I've been baptized. I, I'm a Baptist. I, I've been in church all of my life. I know God wants to help. I know God is for me. Can I tell you? There are even pastors that are preaching. They're preaching the word of. They're, they're, they're preaching the Bible. And, and they think that, you know what, because I'm preaching the Bible, God's got to let me in. But can I tell you, there are, there are preachers pastoring uh, churches in this United States of America, and I, can I tell you, even in St. Joe this morning, that, that though they open up the Word of God, and maybe, they're, maybe they are saying the right words, even those preachers don't have a personal relationship with God. Because can I tell you this morning, it's not about the words. Your relationship and my relationship with God is not about the words. There are also uh, a televangelist all, all, over the, all over the TV. Man, they think they are right next to God and God is speaking directly to them. And God, listen... God has a message for you today right from them. Nobody else can tell you this, but God spoke just straight to them. And they say, hey, you know what, God? God's speaking to me. That I'm in. If anybody's in heaven, I'm in there. It's not about the words. It's not about the words. There are a lot of people who believe that they have a relationship with God and with Christ because of what they say. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 5, the Bible tells, tells us to examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates? Listen, God tells us, listen, we need to 
examine our own selves. Because it's not about what you say. There are people that, and, and I'll be honest with you, I have, I, have, I have made the mistake and I have said it myself. Listen, if you will pray this prayer. Have you ever heard that? Can I tell you, it's not about the words. It's about what's in there. It's about what you believe. And we're going to get into that here in just a minute. But, but let me tell you this morning, it is not about the words. These people, these people that have said, Lord, Lord. This is a relationship that never was. A relationship that never was. Secondly, this morning, number one, it's not about the words. Secondly, this morning, it's, it's not about the deeds. Now we're, we're passing through the, the ver first two uh, points very quickly, but the third one we're going to take a little bit more time on. But can I tell you this morning that, that your salvation, your relationship with God the Father is not about what you can do. Look there in verse number 22. Again, the Bible tells us there in verse number 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Haven't we done this? Haven't I done this? Listen, you've got to let me in. But the Bible says it's not about the deeds. It's not about what you have done or can do or will do. There are way too many people in this world today who believe that they have in order to have a right relationship to God, they've got to do good deeds. There are way too many religions in this world today that are preaching and, and teaching that, listen, in order for you to go to heaven, in order for you to have a relationship with God, you must do this, 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 and that. And I tell you, that's not what our Bible says. That's not what our Bible says. Listen, way too many people that think they must work to be saved. They pretend to trust in God, but trust more in their works. There's a lot of people who believe that, that they have a relationship with Christ because of what they do. I tell you, one of man's basic uh, desires in, in life is to be in control of his own destiny, right? To be in control of his own destiny. And can I tell you, that includes his eternal destiny as well. And so this, this concept of, of works-based salvation just feeds right into our pride and our arrogancy. But what does the Bible say about that? The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, There is a way which seemeth right, Unto man, but the end thereof is death. The end thereof is death. This is the reason why God gave us these verses that we're talking about today. Because let me tell you, it's not about what you can do. It's not about what you have done. It's not about what you will do. It's about what God has done for you. It's not about you doing. It's about Him Doing it for you. And I tell you, the, the people that are, that are believing, hey, hey, God, listen, we have, we have done all these things for you. We've prophesied. We've preached. We've gone out and we've, we've knocked doors inviting people to, to, to church. Listen, we've done all these things, but God, you've got to let me in. The Bible tells us that's not the case. It is not about your deeds. This is a relationship that never was. Can I tell you, you can never do enough good works to earn your way to heaven. Never. You can never be good enough to go to heaven. You can never say sufficient good words Write words to earn your way to heaven. Because number three this morning. The relationship, your relationship to God is not about 
your words or your deeds, but your relationship to God is about the will of the Father. It's about the will of the Father. Look there, back there, verse number 21. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. It's not a matter of your will, or his will, or her will, or, or, or my will. It's about his will. It's about God's will. I've... I've I've got a, a, a stepmother. Listen, she, I've talked with her about salvation I don't know how many times. And, and she has told me, well, Thomas, listen, you're going to get, you do it your way and I'll do it my way. And I have told her, listen, it's not your way, my way, it's God's way and no other way. But all too often. Can I tell you, she's not the only one that believes that. There's a lot of people in this world that believe that. Listen, it's not my way, his way, her way, your way, it's God's way. God isn't interested in religious words or religious deeds. He's interested in a personal relationship. A personal relationship. Our relationship with God has been that of enemies. That of being separated from him. But he desires a father-son or father-daughter relationship with us. He desires a personal relationship with you and with me today. He desires that. In order for us to have that relationship with him, he knew that we couldn't say enough good words. He knew that we couldn't do enough good deeds. He knew that we couldn't be sufficiently good enough in our life. Listen, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 64, 6, that all of our righteousness, everything good that we can do are as filthy rags when compared to Him. So can I tell you? He took things into His hands. Can I tell you? He did the good deeds. He came down from heaven and he hung on a cross and he died there because the wages of sin is death because you and I are sinners. Every single one of us that lives on the face of this earth that has ever lived on the face of this earth and that ever will live on the face of this earth. We are sinners. And God came down in the form of a human being in Jesus Christ. And he hung on that cross and he died. And he rose again. Hey, can I tell you, he did the good deed. Hey, he, the, the, God knew that you couldn't do enough good deeds. He knew that you couldn't say enough good words. But so, so let me tell you, he did the good deed and he said the good words. He said, it is finished when he hung on that cross. And let me tell you, that is telling you and that's telling me today that it is finished. There's nothing, no good deed that you can do, no good word that you can say. You can't be sufficiently good enough. Listen, it is done. It is finished. God said it is finished. He did what needed to be done. He said what needed to be said. God's will for you is to believe. In Jesus Christ. Is to believe. Believe in what he has done for you. And what he has done for me. There in John chapter 6. Verse number 28. And verse number 29. John chapter 6. Verse number 28 and 29. The Bible says. They said. <clears throat> uh, then said they unto him. What shall we do. That we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them. This is the work of God, that you, what? That you believe on Him whom He has sent. That you believe on Him. This is the will of God. As one commentary said, the word, uh, the work of God is not that which is commanded by God, but it is that which is, has been wrought by God. In other words, 
It is what God has done for you, not what you can do for God. It is the work that God has done and not the work that man has done or can do. This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. Romans, excuse me, John chapter 3, verse number 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse number 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. John chapter 3, verse number 36. The Bible tells us, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him the will of God is not that you know some information about Jesus Christ there's a lot of people that know a lot of information about Jesus Christ but they don't have a relationship with them there's a lot of people it's not about uh, that you know good things about him it's not that you do good deeds or good works it's that you have a relationship a personal relationship with him by believing in what he has done for you. Look here in verse number 23. Look what it says. There. It says, therefore. Listen, in verse number 21 it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse number 22 says, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name uh, cast out devil, and thy name done many wonderful works. Verse number 23 says, Therefore, excuse me, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Notice that God will not say that, that He had a relationship with you, but because of what you've done or because of what you've not done, you've lost it. No, that's not what the Bible says. He says, I never knew you. Hey, listen, let me tell you this morning, if you're depending on a prayer that you've prayed, the words that came out of your mouth, if you're depending on, on the good things that you do in this life, if you die today and you go slip out into eternity, that's what God's going to have to say to you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If you want to have a right relationship with Christ, your family, your friends, and even lost people in this world, then you need to have a right relationship with God. Let me tell you this morning, don't be fooled into thinking that you have a relationship because of your good words or your good deeds. That's exactly what the devil wants you to believe. But the Bible says you've got to have a relationship with God. And that relationship comes in believing. But you may be sitting there saying, well, well, Pastor Thomas, that's all well and good. But what in the world, what in the world does it mean to believe in the Bible? When the, when the Bible tells us he that believeth, what does that mean? Biblical saving faith or biblical saving belief is far more than believing Certain things are true. Biblical saving faith is also, it's, it's, it's believing, it's faith in, in those things, but it's also a trusting, 100% trust in what God has done. Let me ask you this this morning. How many of you, whenever you came in this morning and you found your pew to sit in, how many of you went over there to your pew and you went, How many of you did that? Right, let me tell you. That is, this is a, a little example 
of, of what God is saying about belief. It, yes, it's believing in what Jesus, who Jesus Christ is. Listen, he is God in the flesh. He is, he, is the, he is our Savior. He came to this earth. He hung on a cross. And He died and He rose again the third day. Listen, those are facts. Those are, those are not just biblical facts, but they are facts in the world today. And listen, you've got to believe those things. But it's got to go beyond that. I believe that. And you've got to put your trust into it. You've got to put your faith into it. Just like you did whenever you came in and you found your pew. You just found it and went like this. Hey, listen to me. That's saving faith. That's believing. That's what God wants for you today. And can I tell you, if you have that kind of belief in what God has done, listen, not what you've done, not what you've said, but in what God has done for you, You'll trust Him, and so you'll just relax in what He has done for you. You'll just fall right into His arms, trusting, hey, you know what? God's got my eternal life. I can trust that, and I can just sit in His arms because He is all-powerful, because the Bible says that He is God in the flesh and He came and He died for me. And I believe that. And He rose again to give me eternal life. Listen, I believe that and I trust that. That is a personal relationship with God. Personal relationship. Listen, can I tell you this morning... I hope and pray that you don't have one of these relationships... That never was. You have the opportunity this morning, even right now, to have a personal relationship. A true personal relationship. Not based upon what you have said. Not based upon what you have done. Not based upon the church that you attend to. But based upon your belief in what the Word of God says about Jesus Christ and who He is and what He's done, done for you. And then you put in one hundred percent trust belief in what he's done that is a true relationship maybe you're here today and you say well pastor thomas man i i've prayed a prayer and i've been depending on what the, the words that i said in that prayer can i tell you if you, if you don't believe what the Bible says about Jesus Christ and what He's done for you, if it was just a matter of words of saying a prayer, words coming out of your mouth, but your heart doesn't believe it, doesn't 100% trust in it, can I tell you, you've got a relationship that never was. But that can be changed today. That can be changed this morning. You can have the right relationship a true personal relationship with God today Christian maybe you're here and you're you've been you've been saying all the right things you've been you're a member here at, at Eastside Baptist Church but let me ask you this when was the last time that you've given someone else to have the opportunity to have a true relationship with God rather than just a relationship that never was when was the last time, that, Christian, that you said, God, thank you for saving my soul. God, thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Can I tell you, we can all do better at that. If you will please stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed this morning. I'll stay in the